Hey guys, so we just had the North American Remote Dual Wise here, so as usual I wanted to provide a tier list of the best meta and rogue decks using data from regional and YCS hopping level information, as well as some dueling book data here and there. Anyways, as usual, definitely go check out those discount codes for Yu-Gi-Oh! sleeves and supplies, as well as singles, especially those quarter century uh, bonanza singles, and also, as always, shout out to YGOProduct.com, as well as Ivan for keeping track of all the meta-relevant tops. Anyways, let's just get to the meta tier list for this month, and we are starting with Snake Eye as Amina. I don't think this is too much of a surprise at this point, it's been getting a lot of YSSL tops, regional tops, I mean, it's still incredibly strong, all the Azamina stuff, you know, basically gives it an extra Omni Negate on top of the one that it already had, so uh, really, really good. I don't think anyone's really questioning it too, too much, although Tempai Dragon actually scored really, really close as well, so this has been, uh, if you watch my recent Balance Prediction Survey results, a lot of people really don't like Tempai and want a lot of the cards in this deck to get hit, uh, although technically they don't actually have a lot of unique number of cards in this deck, right? So I think it's just for the sake of because it can be pretty sacky just in terms of like let's say shifter uh, and they're probably maining Perlia and Fuwalos as well because they are going second in game one situation so it really comes up a lot more for them so it can be very very strong it doesn't really feel good uh, to lose to them but and also going first you know Quacky Mirror Dragon uh, that they bring out of Hieratic Seals that can also be pretty pretty strong on its own uh, as a going first option for a lot of different meta relevant decks out there. Fire King Snake Eye, so this has been pretty popular post banlist, and the Fire King stuff really does provide some more unique interactions, right? I mean, like the Kirin being able to use that to dodge something like targeting, like Imperm, that can be very strong, and also that Kirin pop is also really, really nice, and the Arvada Monster Negate can be pretty nice as well, so I think it does uh, provide some unique interactions, and it's been doing super, super strong as well. Uh, and then you have Yubel, this is a deck that has taken a step down, not so much because of its power level per se, because it's a very strong deck if left uninterrupted, but we've been talking about the Mole Charmies, you know, Fuwalos and Perlia, they both do uh, heavy damage against this deck, and you're going to draw a lot, like 10 cards essentially, so, uh, and that's probably not going to bode too well, they do play the Thrust Package usually from what I've seen, obviously this deck recently came second place at the North American Remote YCS uh, by my boy uh, Rayhan, so you can definitely go check out that profile as well, so you know what? sure like the thrust stuff is there but it's obviously not too too ideal you'd rather be able to play but the mulch army is just uh, unfortunately just too strong but uh, as Rayhan had said also you know oftentimes he might just droll himself uh, just to prevent the opponent from drawing off of Wallace or Perlia for example uh, because they don't have to search too too often at least in a lot of instances. So then we move on to tier 2 and Centurion has been really uh, doing pretty well and I've been seeing this deck a lot online as well from my experience so Blazing Quasar honestly it pretty much just stops anything and it's very strong they can spit out another one uh, or sometimes let's say they go with like the Chaos Angel route. Uh, the other thing with this deck is it doesn't get hit as hard as by the uh, Mole Charmy so I think that's why it's been kind of popular. I mean I've resolved like four wallows against them like maybe drew like three cards which you know is actually still decent but uh for the most part they're not going to play really really heavily into it i also don't like the fact that so deck lockdown seems to be a really popular choice especially for centurion even though it's sort of a generic card but i think this deck plays it a little better than a lot of different decks and so that is really frustrating i did put that in the list prediction survey hopefully that one also does get hit in some capacity i really hate having to wait you know 10 minutes to a combo and then they just slap deck clock down at the end uh because i would have just scooped right away if i had known they had it to begin with but i'm complaining as usual we do have labyrinth it's actually still hanging around i mean being this high in tier 2 is actually still pretty impressive i would say i mean it's gotten pops at the ycs level you still have transaction rollback you have all their traps uh and also d barrier being legal still i don't know why but it is very good for Lavin because it is pretty pretty good in this format right now and they're a deck that can really tutor that out pretty fast uh although dominus impulse can obviously really affect them because something like ash or even bell not that anyone's playing bell but on you know welcome big welcome that was always pretty devastating against this deck and now you have another option in impulse which does uh really kind of hinder them so then we have Rescue Ace, this is a deck that I've always had high hopes for, even though it had fallen to like rogue status for quite some time, I don't know how, but after Ega format, once, you know, Snake Eyes became like the number one deck, Rescue Ace really, really fell down hard, but you know what, the first YCS post Rage of the Beast at YCS Niagara, for example, there were multiple tops with this deck, and now continuing that trend, at least at the regional level, maybe not as much success as perhaps some would have thought after that initial YCS success, but I still think it's an incredibly strong deck, uh, back interruptions, monster interruptions, having combination of that, I always felt it was very hard to side against. 
So next we have Memento, which actually topped the North American Remote Dual ICS by Scarlet. So definitely go check out her deck profile. Really, really happy to see that uh, performance and doing so well. So yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not an expert in Memento. All I know is that Shifter seems to be really, really devastating, uh, at least from the times that I surveyed the Memento player. So that is one downside. But other than that, I think when it goes first, it does tend to be pretty, pretty scary. Uh, be able to just pop a lot of things. If you play Cranium Burst, I guess you also have like some Monster Negates on top of that. So you know what? I think it's a pretty interesting choice. So next we have Exodia, speaking of interesting choices, so this also topped the North American Remote Dual ICS, which you can check out the deck profile on my channel. It actually topped right from the first YCS post Rage of the Abyss at Niagara, uh, and you can check out that uh, check that out on your scenes channel as well. So, you know, I get it. There's been some complaints I've been reading about this deck in terms of, you know, it's playing Shifter, it's playing Secret Village. So, yeah, those are toxic cards. I agree with you. Uh, at the same time, I'm still at least happy to see a deck like Exodia still has a way a modern iteration of this deck that can still play in the current meta. I mean, I think that's still kind of cool just because, you know, it is an anime classic deck. Is it, you know, like the best to play against it? Not really, but at the same time, I, I am still happy to see it. I mean, for example, I've been OTK'd by this Exodia deck. Like, they'll just like gain AK, one-shot me, and I had a good laugh. So, you know what? For the time being, I'm fine with it being here. So next we have Mermail, and so this is a deck uh, also technically cool that it's uh, getting some success, uh, especially with some new support from Rage of the Abyss. Uh, the only downside is Handloop is another one that's uh, kind of a toxic mechanic, right? Not the biggest fan of having to play against that. Uh, so this deck has been doing well at YCS level, regional level, uh, and picking it up recently. So I recently surveyed the Mermail players, which you can check out. They actually, most of them did say that they categorize this deck as tier 2. At the time when I saw those results, I thought it was more of a rogue deck, but you know what? Clearly, they were actually onto something, so uh, really cool to see that. And then moving on, we have Ritual Beast. This has been kind of declining lately, uh, especially in the last couple of months, if you sort of look at it that way. And part of that, I'm sure, is because of like the Mold Charmies, for example, Pearly F. Wallace, and now the new one, whatever that one's called, that's for like special summoning from Grave or Banish or whatever, that's also going to hit them as well. So you know what? It's not looking too, too great, but it did still top. For example, YCS Niagara by Cecilia, so that was still uh, nice to see. It's another deck that kind of happens to play a lot of Floodgate kind of like cards, right? You know, it's another deck that can play Dimension Shifter, kind of key common theme there. Uh, they can also play, usually play Protoss from my understanding, at least main deck it. Some might play Colossus on top of that in the side or in the extra, I mean, uh, or maybe they just don't play at all. But either way, their win conditions typically are kind of like Floodgate-like effects, uh, which isn't great. They also take a very long time to combo, so uh, not one of the best ones. To, uh, to play against. So next you have White Forest. So this is a deck that has been falling quite a bit lately. So and also runic decks in general have fallen down a lot as well. Not to say that White Forest is exclusive to runic engine or anything, because the one, for example, the one that topped the North American World Two YCS set, you can check out the profile on my channel. I mean, he was playing with let's say Fiendsmith and like Centurion cards as well. So there are other ways to go about it. Uh, but for the most part, it seems like it's been kind of declining. I mean, you do have D Bear pretty popular right now, which happens to hit a lot of different uh, strategies, right? Especially you know calling Synchro. Uh, and then you have Flunder. This is a deck that also has been really absent lately, despite it being a shifter deck. And usually you saw Flunder at least always stay in like the rogue relevant status because of shifter and how powerful it is. And really arguably probably the best deck that can actually play under shifter in terms of how it actually has advantage under it compared to other decks that can just kind of play it, but it's not actually that ideal. Uh, so you know what? Flunder has been kind of absent, but it has actually uh, gotten a YCS top recently. So that's something to, I guess, keep in mind if you are trying to look for like cheap budget rogue options. So next you have Magical Musketeer Unchained. I mean, I think they're technically more Unchained than they are Magical Muskets, but uh, so this deck did actually finish fourth at the Remote Duel YCS uh, by Darian, who you can check out on my channel. So that's a super, super impressive run, by the way. So I think it's really cool. There are definitely some synergies with like this and like Fiendsmith stuff because, well, turns out they're all Fiends. So you know what? Definitely something that you can look into. Uh, and then you have Kashir, sort of like pure Kashir. I know we're sort of accustomed to seeing a lot of the small Kashir package with like Fenrir, Unicorn, and just like the birth in a lot of different, like for example, Snake Eye decks, that's usually pretty popular. But you know what? Uh, basic, just pure Kashir has actually gotten a recent YCS top as well. Another shifter deck, you know what? It's pretty generic. It can be pretty good going first and second and has been hanging around there in the rogue status for quite some time. So then we have Sprite. I actually started playing this deck again recently after playing Branded Despia for like 20 months straight. Uh, so I really do like this deck. I think it's uh, very easy to play. It's very consistent going first and going second. It has some really solid options. Uh, the whole Mirror Mage, uh, the two Ice Barrier cards that uh, can lead to easy Toad uh, with this deck uh, definitely changes things for the better after Elf got banned. So I think it's really solid. It has a lot of room for non-engine space and if you don't play for, pay for Fawalos, honestly this deck is actually very very cheap to play as well. 
Then you have Sky Striker, obviously infamously finished second place at YCS Niagara with Ryan Yu. But since then, you know what? They've actually had a uh, regional top uh, after that. So it's not a complete fluke, definitely. You know what? If you can pilot the deck well, there is still room for opportunities uh, to succeed with this deck. Obviously, it's going to be a very uphill battle, but you know what? At least it's realistic. And then you have Dragon Link. So this also actually recently topped YCS. Uh, doesn't see as much regional success nowadays. Um, they do play a lot of Bistials, which I guess, you know, play of Ubel has kind of gone down. So maybe it's not as great. Same thing for like, let's say, Branded Despia. That has fallen out of even tier 2 conversation at this point. At least we see Labyrinth being up here. So you know what? Bistials are good for that at least. Uh, so I think Dragon Link definitely lost a lot of its power with, you know, something like Savage or Barone being banned. But you know what? Uh, at some point, as I always say, Konami seems to really like Dragon, so I'm sure they'll come back to meta relevance uh, at some point. Uh, and then speaking of branded SPI, they've really fallen out. It did recently get a YCS top though, which is uh, happy to see. But at the same time, you know, overall, like even at the regional level, you're not seeing too too much of that anymore. Uh, even though gimmick puppet lock is still legal, I don't know why. Branded Fusion being hit to one definitely does hurt the deck a lot. I mean, if it resolves, sure, it's really not that much different from when it was at three because you're just gimmick locking them uh but at the same time it just makes the deck a lot more fragile to hand traps than what it already was and we're in a format where we have a lot of hand traps and you have something like impulse now in the mix which really hurts this deck because there's so many cards that impulse can hit in branded despia so honestly it's not the best time but at the same time again if you're looking for cheap options now that thrust is reprinted in the rarity set as like a cheap super this deck should be pretty pretty cheap to play as well and finally, we have what's called Plant Link. So usually it's like a 60 card pile. It did top YCS Niagara, for example. And you know what? Every now and then you still see some regional level success as well. As I always say, I'm not like the biggest expert on Plant Link. I'm sure a lot of people aren't because you know what? You always see this deck do super, super well out of nowhere. Uh, you know, it's usually like a 60 card pile. I know when it goes for us, it's really deadly. If they're still playing like the Rose Whip Lock, which I've seen being played usually in the side, it's probably just like FTK for most decks and uh, can be quite strong if you know how to pilot it well anyways guys that was it for the meta tier list for this month hopefully you found that interesting so big thanks to all of you for watching big thanks to my patrons and sponsors for the continued support as always and well take care guys